Have you ever seen one of these boards when travelling by train or near the railway? These advise drivers that there's a speed restriction in place on that section of the line. Speed restrictions are imposed for a variety of reasons, including rail defects, seasonal factors such as heat, or the condition of track. One of the more common causes is the topic of this video, cyclic top. So what is cyclic top? Cyclic top is a regular set of dips on either one or both rails, like a wave. It can vary in two main ways, the length between the peaks of the wave, or its wavelength, and then the size of the dip, or its amplitude. So why is it dangerous? The danger of cyclic top lies in the loading and unloading of the train suspension. Given that the suspension on freight trains is stiffer, cyclic top is much more of a risk to freight trains than passenger trains with their softer suspension. The repetitive pattern of dips causes a build-up of stored energy in the suspension of the train wagons. This stored energy needs to be released. The track underneath is a solid construction, so the only way for the energy to be released is upwards, lifting the wagon. This causes it to go light for a period of time, with minimal load on the wheels. So what goes up must come down. So when gravity takes back over and the wagon drops down, it's now from a higher height than it was before. When the suspension then compresses again, it does so even further, increasing the energy level. The regular dips continue the process, gradually increasing the store of energy in the suspension. This in turn increases the liftoff effect, when the energy is released, until the liftoff is high enough for the wheel and its flange to jump the rail and derail the wagon. The risk of derailment is further increased if there is another track geometry fault within the cyclic top area, such as twist or alignment. So what causes it? The root cause of cyclic top is known as a trigger. This will be the first dip that causes a load and unload cycle, as we've already discussed. The area where the load of the train comes back down onto the track in a sudden manner is where the second dip will form. This is then repeated, causing more dips and the deepening the current ones. Given that it's normal for the speed of trains to be consistent through an area, the dips will occur at equal distances apart from each other. If a trigger is only on one rail, a cyclic top fault can occur on that single rail whereas if it's on both rails, the cycling top will form and propagate on both rails. So what are these triggers? The common triggers are dipped or voiding joints, common to be either on a single or both rails, insulated block joints, adjustment switches, S and C, particularly at the crossing nose or if voiding is present, welds that haven't been ground off level when they've been formed, and most commonly, wet beds. So how is cyclic top removed? The repair of cyclic top involves lifting out and removing the dips. On short areas this can be done manually, but on longer sites a tamper or stone blower will be required. It is essential to remove the root cause of the cyclic top, the trigger. Removing the trigger avoids the cyclic top reforming. A concept known as ballast memory can be an issue here. It is common for voiding to return in the same area due to the ballast returning to its original position after the remedial work is undertaken. For this reason, complete renewal of the ballast in the area or resighting of rail joints that keep dipping is required to overcome the ballast memory. So there we have a guide to cyclic top, why it's dangerous for trains, what causes it and how it's removed. I hope you found this video useful. Please do give it a like hit that subscribe button to support the channel. Thank you.